領域展開無料空襲 Alright, y'all. So the last time we left off, Luffy and the others went on a sea trying to go save Robin. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, besides the fact that Sanji was doing his own thing. So, with that being said, let's continue. So, they all burst out of Water 7 in style. And I'm not gonna lie, it looked it tough. By the way, this is how you know Luffy does not care about his life. This man is standing on top of a sea train, knowing damn well he cannot swim. Just look at the look on his face. Yeah, he definitely d o not care. But, anyways, the Frankie family, they w a s fiending for the right time for the sea train to fly in the air. And you could tell they w a s fiending, cause look at the color of this man's eyes. But wait, that's not even a bad part about this. They w a s in mid air with them and they shot the connection cannons. And they could have legit killed someone if they were sitting right there in the back of the sea train. And obviously, they didn't give no f because they just shot this. But since luckily no one didn't get hurt, I guess everything was okay. But Zoro was not messing with that. He was like, bro, y'all stupid as hell. Anyways, Luffy asked Kokoro, was this the fastest the train can go? And she was like, just calm down, kid. We didn't even reach the railway yet. So, with that being said, Kokoro, she uses her observation hockey. And keep in mind, it's a stormy weather, so nobody can find the tracks but her, cause she's the goat. So, eventually, she locks in and she finds the tracks. And she started to just keep trying to put the train in. Side the tracks, and she just kept missing it by an inch. And then, out of nowhere, Chimney she started cheering her on. And Kokoro was like, Hold on, wait, what is she doing here? Because apparently, she puts a man left with iceberg, but she ended up sneaking her way on a train. And not only that, and this girl was on top of the train with no care in the world. And Kokoro was trying to tell her to get down because once the train hit the tracks, it's over, meaning that the train is gonna go really fast. And remember, they can't stop the train, the brakes are nothing, so it's Raps. So, with that being said, Luffy he tries to help her and she over here just smiling, talking about some hey, that's the straw hat guy. Hi, like bro, if you don't get your ass on the fucking train, anyways, the train finally g e t on the tracks and Luffy, g o m b e and Chimney went flying. And luckily, if it wasn't for the Frankie family, them boys would have been done. And by the way, just look how fast this train is going now. She wasn't lying once they hit the tracks, anyways. We take a look inside the sea train and Zoro was like, wait, it's way more. More people than it should be in here. And it was like, yeah, who do you mean? And this man probably go yell at them and say, he means you. And Zoro was like, nigga, I mean you too. And when I said that shit had me dying for no reason, but it just had me dying laughing, bro, I swear. For those that doesn't watch One Piece, I swear y'all will never understand how funny this show is, bro. The comedy is peak, I swear. Like, I could rewatch this show so many times and I will still laugh at the same jokes. No, on everything I love. Anyways, Polly, he was like, I decided to come along with you. No matter what I said, I couldn't stop you guys. And the enemy you guys trying to rescue your friends from is the same enemy that tried to kill Iceberg. I got something to say to those b niggas. Ha ha ha, yeah, that's the shit we wanted to do too. So that's why we snuck on the train to find you. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Seen Mar Hunter was right. So, with that being said, they all realized that they had the same common enemy. And Luffy was telling them, hey, y'all, listen up. Even though we had a fight with the Frankie family and the Gali lost shipwrights, the enemy we're going out there is one and the same. Now, the strongest one, the toughest one out of all of them, is definitely that pigeon guy. He's mine, so I'm gonna beat the shit out of him. Anyways, they end up making an alliance. And while they were busy talking about that, a huge wave was coming their way. Eventually, they got on top of the sea train and they started shooting it with their cannons. Of course, that did not work at all. And then Zomba, he started talking crap like he was gonna do something with this big cannon. I'm not gonna lie, he had me in the first half. I thought because he had this big cannon, he was gonna actually do something. But in fact, he did nothing at all. So Luffy and Zoro was like, alright, bad. I guess it's time for us to handle it. So both Luffy and Zoro get on the C train. And they managed to create a whole beam and shot through the wave. I'm not gonna lie, pre time skip was so goaded, bro. Like, we always have some type of team attack. But, anyways, they end up making it through the wave, and yeah, pretty much, yeah. And of course, everybody, they were just cheering them on and all that stuff. But what is they doing? I thought Luffy and Zoro was in front of them. Hmm, I don't know. But, anyways, Luffy and Zoro was getting back inside the sea train. And Mozu tries to raise this man Luffy up. She was talking about some. Are you 
my alien or something because that was totally out of this world. I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're gonna need a better pickup line than that. Anyways, Nami tells Luffy that Sanji wanna talk to him. And pretty much he tells Luffy that he know the whole situation about Robin because Nami told him. And then Luffy was like, all right, bet. You already know what's next, my nigga. Go give them hell, Sanji. And everybody was like, huh, what? And Zoro was like, hold on, wait, he's not gonna stand a chance against them and that he should wait for them. Hey, Cook, can you hear me? Some of them niggas on that train is really tough. You should, Zoro. It's fine. If it was you, would you wait? Hmm? <laughs> if you was on that train instead of him and I told you that Robin sacrificed herself to protect us, would you sit there and do nothing? <clears throat> There's no point in trying to stop him. But thanks, Mox said, I appreciate the love. I hope they kill you. Anyways, that settles it. I been was gonna fight for Robin before you even told me the truth. But now that you told me how she really feels, I'm definitely not stopping now. And just like that, this man Sanji is about to go wreak havoc. By the way, if my VA was ass, I just wanted to do it because I haven't did it in a long time in all my videos. And by the way, don't take it seriously. I just do it for fun. All of my twists got a gun. Couple of my twists on the run. Couple of my twins are selling runs. Anyways, both Sanji and Frankie was ready to go save Robin, but this man Usopp was like, nah. And he was talking about how none of this stuff got anything to do with him anymore. And not only that, they're about to make themselves a personal enemy of the world government. And Usopp was like, he not trying to be a part of all that. So he left. That's crazy. That's wild. Wow. And while that was happening, the Marines, they was looking for them and they actually found them on top of the train. But out of nowhere, Sniper King Snipe broke out the window. And both Sanji and Frankie was like, who the hell are you? And Sniper King was like, Your friend told me everything. I know you need help saving a friend. That along is reason enough for me to join your cause. My weapon is at your disposal. <coughs> My name is Sniper King. The wind carry my name from Sniper Island far away. I'm not gonna complete the song on Lulu La La Lu. Are you serious right now, bro? Anyway, Sanji, he set up a meeting with them and Sanji tells them that he gonna separate the train carts because the plan is to save Robin and the less the enemies, I mean, the better it is for them. So as you can see, it's seven cars and Sanji and the others stay outside of the seventh car. Also, I want you guys to keep in mind it's a whole bunch of Marines inside of it. So with that being said, Sniper King knocks on the door and then he opens it up and it was like, Hi. Hi. And then they close their right back, bruh. This man Sanji a troll because obviously he was the one that made up this plan so with that being said the marines they all started piling up over there to that door and this man sniper king was sealing up the door so that way they could not open the door so this man t-bone their marine captain bro was like i love the young people and this man really sliced around the door as a rectangle shape but hey i got news for them it was already too late because them boys was gone and t-bone he climbed on top of the roof and he see them boys already getting ready to leave and by the time he told his man it was already too late sanji already done detached two of the cars and T-Bone, he was looking with the shitty face. Bro was like, I was too late. Anyways, one of the agents was so mad, he thought it was a good idea to run towards the door and try to kick it down. So Sanji just opened up the door wide open and this man just fell right inside the sea. Anyway, Sanji and the others was getting ready to beat up these fathers. So they start running towards Sanji and Sanji, he kicks one, right? But somehow the other two end up going inside the air with him. I guess Sanji is just goaded like that. Next is Sniper King and he didn't wait there's no time he just sniped both of them in the face and then next up is frankie and he just punches them and send them flying so after all that they started to fire a couple of rounds at them and as any normal human would do they will hop out the way which sanji and sniper king did but you know frankie he had to show off that he was a cyborg and he just took the shots and also as a normal human if you see someone taking bullets and you continuously shoot them nine out of ten you're probably not normal yourself or you're just an idiot anyways with that being said said frankie he just pick up the chair and he just tosses it at him they gotta be npcs because they just sat there and let the chair fall on them so after all that frankie started telling them that he a cyborg and kind of flexing it just a little bit and this man sniper king he pulls out a needle and he pokes him in the back and it turns out only the front side of his body is robotic but that's 
only because he couldn't get the backside when he was making himself. But somehow, in some way, he still had to flex that he got a mini fridge inside his stomach. And I'm not gonna lie, that is kind of handy, especially on days you really need it. But anyways, after they was done with all that, they end up walking inside the fourth car. And this man named Wante pulls up in roller skates. And I'm not gonna lie, dude is pretty ugly. Y'all wanna know what's crazy? His face is not even our main concern. Dude grabs a whole pile of flour and start chewing it up like it's nothing. And then next, this man created ramen out of his nose, bruh. Like, what type of psychopath shit this nigga is on? And he even had the audacity to ask them, did they want some? But of course, they was like, hell nah. And after all that, Sanji was like, I'm sorry, nigga, but you gonna have to enjoy that shit on your own. And then bro was like, nah, you not going nowhere. And then bro just started doing all this hand movement and then he pulls off his lab coat and bro was all like if you want to rescue that friend of yours you're gonna have to get through my ramen kempo Ra ramen kempo <laughs> that little nigga is making fun of me i know he's annoying as fuck but calm down bro anyways after all that frankie he shoots him but he grazed just a little bit of his hair and at first it seemed like bro was unfazed but you can never tell that he's unfazed because he make this stupid face so that really pissed frankie off and him and sniper king was a about to go attack him but Sanji was like man y'all calm down don't let him get under y'all skin and he basically called bro light work and he said he's gonna handle it so with that being said Sanji started talking to him and telling him bro you not even no chef for real and this huh? man straight up ignored him and Sanji got pissed and he ran up towards him and he tries to kick him but bro dodged it I ain't gonna lie but anyways after all that Sanji he was like I had enough I'm gonna take care of him and tell Sniper King and Frankie that he'll catch up with them later. But Wante wasn't about to let that slide. So this man started pouring a whole bag of flour inside his mouth. And then after he was done with that, this man started shooting pointy noodles out of his nose. This right here was probably one of the most weirdest shit I ever seen when I first watched this episode. And after that, he just continuously shoots it out his nose. Both Sniper King and Frankie hops out the way. Meanwhile, Sanji was running right behind him and he tries to go for a kick, but he hops out the way and then after that both sniper king and frankie left that way only one take only focus on sanji after that sanji he <laughs> run towards one take and he tries to go for a kick but he dodges it next sanji go for the left kick and you know he gotta have his hands in his pocket to look all cool but one take he dodges it and then sanji go for the right kick but he dodges that and then he goes for one more and he just hops out the way man's legit landed on his ass that's crazy anyway sanji was like bro this gonna take forever if you're gonna keep on dodging me like like this so Wante was like all right back so this man started to create fire with his skates and look at Sanji face bro like what the hell anyways he starts skating towards Sanji and he hops up towards him and then he goes for the kick and as you can see my boy Sanji dodged that and you know he got to keep his hand in his pocket to look all cool Wante nope. does a follow-up and he starts throwing a barrage of kicks but of course Sanji he dodges that but not only Sanji dodged the kicks this man kicked this man in the face 12 times without us even knowing anyways after all that this man wanted to grab a whole bag of flour and he started pouring it all in his mouth and then he wait is this nigga playing in his nose oh hell nah bro need to be stopped imagine you in a whole fight with somebody and they just start playing in their nose i'm good bro you got it anyways after all that this man pulls all this out of his nose on some looney tune shit and then he creates this noodle uniform or whatever he calls it and i'm not gonna lie he even made himself look even more goofy anyways we cut to frankie and he's about to fight this dude named neuro and he's supposed to be a new member of cp9 i'm gonna just skip past the chit chat because it's not really important they said so we start off with frankie telling huh? bro to look behind him and he fell for the trick and frankie didn't waste no time and he snuck bro right in his shit and i'm not gonna lie that looked like it was painful after that we cut back to sanji wante tries to punch sanji but he hops out the way but this time sanji only got one hand in his pocket i don't know what this mean anyways wante he goes for another attack and sanji tries to kick him and it didn't work in fact his feet got stuck inside his ramen thing and then he picked sanji up up by the leg and he slams him down on his back and you know he was feeling good because he finally landed a hit but he wasn't done yet this man started sliding sanji across the counter had this man breaking up the dishes and all and after that he picked this man sanji up again and his arm was stuck this time and you want to know what he did he slammed him again on his back and he was trying his best to look like he was on demon time but bro <laughs> 
I'm not taking you serious. Anyways, he crushes Sanji. Pause. And as you can see, Sanji going through it right now. But obviously, Wante did not care because he slams him on his head. Then he slammed his back on a wall. Then on a the ceiling. And pretty much y'all get it. He just continuously slammed him back and forth until he eventually throws him. And at this point, Sanji, he was just happy that he was free. Because, I mean, who want to keep getting tossed around like that? But anyways, with that being said, Wante tries to attack Sanji again. But Sanji hops out the way and this man was sticking on the wall like he's on his spider-man shit but at the same time he was still trying to figure out a way to try to attack him so he hopped towards him and he tries to kick him but Wante was like nah and he started shooting pointy noodles at him sending Sanji flying and then after that Sanji he gets back up and wait hold on what is he doing it is he lifting up his sleeves? Yeah, you already know what that means. He's about to cook. So with that being said, one day he started to throw a barrage of punches at him. And at first it seemed like he was landing those hits. But no, nah, my boy Sanji pulls out the kitchen knife and he started chopping away. This man literally started cooking him. This man really created a whole plate of pasta. That's crazy. And Sanji was like... I missed the part, but that's my problem. So with that being said, Wate, he tries to attack Sanji again, but he dodged both of his attacks. In the process, slicing this man noodle arms. And Wate, he was pretty pissed because Sanji was just stopping his attacks. And then after that, Sanji tells him that he's going to show him how to really cook. And then we cut back to the fight with Frankie. So we start off with Nero running full speed ahead towards Frankie. Frankie pulls out the metal fist and he tries to punch him. But Nero weaves it and this man was styling on him. Bro, it's not my... Michael Jackson. And then he started to do all these flips and uses a Tempest kick and hits Frankie with it. And at first it seemed like it worked and bro thought it did too how he was just smiling. But then my boy Frankie pulls out the fire style Jusu, but that didn't work because Nero hops out the way. And Frankie was like, what the hell is he doing? Because he hopped off the train. But since he's a four power master, he could hop on the air, which he did by using Moonwalk. Immediately after Frankie goes for the punch and Nero, he goes for the kick and they both clash. And then after that they both get mad at each other because none of their attacks is working next we cut back to sanji and as you can see this man already was cooking him up man's made three plates of pasta anyways one day he tries kicking sanji and this man was just slicing up all of that and as sanji was getting closer to him he started shooting noodles out of his nose again but sanji he blocks it and then he hops up in the air and he starts slicing up the rest of his little noodle armor looking thing and then stomps on his face with a bat flip and after all that he had bro looking goofy next we cut back to frankie and nero and nero throws another one of his tempest kicks but frankie pulls out the captain american shield and he blocks it it's crazy how we don't see frankie doing nothing like this no more like bro this was so lit anyways nero was flabbergasted because it was like there's no way a human can do all this with that being said this man frankie started to shoot nails at him but nero dodges it with his moonwalk and this man nero was like since he couldn't do the finger pistol yet this man legit just pulls out some pistols wait did this nigga just pull those pistol out his ass what type of freaky shit this nigga is on i guess he just like two large objects up his ass but anyways but at the same time, Frankie was trying to troll him. He told him he was going to go to the next car. So Nero flies towards him. And Frankie pulls out the arm blicky and he started to shoot at him. But Nero already knew he was trolling. So he dodges it. And he goes behind Frankie and he shoots him with the pistol. And remember, Frankie, he could not take hits from the back. Pause. So this time, it actually hurt. And then Nero, he started to smile because he know his weakness now. So Frankie, he pulls out the finger blicky and tries to shoot him. Him, but he dodges it and Nero goes behind his back and he tries to hit him with a tempest kick and Frankie just barely dodges it and then after that Nero he was like I know your weakness now bruh it's your back so Frankie he thought of a brilliant idea and laid down on his back so he won't get hurt and Nero was just like bruh and we cut to Sniper King and Robin. And basically, Sniper King was giving Robin the whole rundown about what's happening. And then after all that, he was trying to give her the octopus shoe so they can escape together. But as you can see the look on her face, she's not messing with that plan. And then after that, Robin tells Sniper King that she's not going. Then after that, Sniper King, he started to get serious. He was like, Bro, this straw hat is not so 
week that they need you to worry about them. Why would you accept that stupid deal without even asking the crew first? You really think that they're gonna go on after knowing that their friends want to sacrifice themselves? Now that they know why you left, they're gonna follow you to the depths of hell. But even after Sniper King told her all of that, she still refuses. And honestly, Robin was her own enemy, to be honest. And then both of them, they started yelling back and forth until this agent came in the room because it was too loud. Anyways, we cut back to Frankie and Noro. And this man Frankie, he supposedly supposed to turn his body into a centaur. But this man had his private in the front when his head actually supposed to be in the front. I could tell when Frankie made this, he was planning on a moment just like this. Because there's no way he did not do that on purpose. Anyways, we cut to Luffy and them. And Luffy spots the two cards that Sanji detached it from the Puff and Tom. So with that being said, Luffy went to go take a look to see if Sanji and them was inside the car. It this man gets stuck inside a door, bruh. But he didn't care. He was still looking around for Sanji and them. Till eventually, the Marines and the agents start just shooting at him. But of course, it did not work. Then after that, Luffy grabbed one of the Marines and he asked what Sanji was in there. And the Marine was like, he don't know who that is. So Luffy then puts an X sign up so he could let them know that they're not there. But they still had a little problem on their hands. Because if they don't do nothing, they're just going to crash into the cars. So my boy Zoro was like, leave it to me. And this man opened up his own domain. Like he literally turned everything gray. And then after that, Zoro used his two swords style. Sword draw, Roshoman, and slices through the cars like it was a block of butter. And he legit had everyone flabbergasted. Them boys lucky they wasn't standing in the middle because them boys would have been sliced in half. Zombie was like, he got all this power and he's not even the leader of the crew? That just shows you how much this man Zoro was a goat. Anyway, Zoro was like, they ain't done yet. Because as they kept going, they seen a whole Sea King sliced in half. And just look how huge this thing is. This man Zoro had to pull out the bandana. So you already know he about to get serious. Anyways, we cut to this man T-Bone and he's over here running on the tracks. Men's really think he's going to catch up to the Puffin Top. Anyways, eventually he stops because he peeps that another train is coming. And this man Zoro, he was just staring at him locked in. By the Frankie family, they was all scared and they was about to go shoot him. But Luffy was like, man, y'all calm down. My boy Zoro got this. So with that being said, Zoro was like, I'm only tell you this one time. Get the hell out the way. But of course, you know, bro, it's not finna move out the way. So both Zoro and T-Bone puss out their swords. Pause. And T-Bone start running towards Zoro. Meanwhile, this man Zoro is straight on demon time. The move he's about to use right now even called Bull Demon. So you already know it's up for T-Bone. So with that being said, Zoro jumped towards him. And T-Bone throws a slash at Zoro but Zoro sliced through all of that and he continuously go towards him and this man tries to throw another one at him and Zoro was like light, light work, work no, no reaction. reaction and by the look on T-Bone face he already know he's cooked and that's exactly what Zoro did sending this man flying this man Luffy did not care because he already knew Zoro was like that meanwhile everybody else was shocked and yeah that's pretty much it for that Luffy and them continuously go full speed ahead to try to catch up to Sanji and them and now we cut back to Sanji it's his turn now so one day he started yelling and all that because he thought Sanji cut him but all Sanji really did is just cut away his little noodle armor looking all tough and once they asked Sanji why he didn't cut him and Sanji was like because kitchen knives is not made for cutting people and as he was still talking once he tries to catch him off guard and throw knives at him but Sanji dodges it and he kicks bro right in the face and had this man yelling but not only that this man kicks his eyeball back in place at least now he don't have to have a telescope for eyeballs anyways once he started to talk shit about Robin in front of Sanji and you know Sanji don't like that so first Sanji kicks him in the eye and then next he kicks him on the side of his face and then next after that he kicks him inside his mouth I'm surprised his teeth didn't come out next kicks him in the middle of his face following it up with a kick to the chin and this man Sanji was like if you keep it up I'm gonna rearrange your whole face and this man wasn't lying he already had his face looking all beat up but this man one day he still was talking shit about Robin so he pissed Sanji off even more and Sanji just started throwing a barrage of kicks at him and finished him off 
up by kicking him into a box. And when this man gets up, we see that Sanji actually rearranged this man's whole face and actually made bro look decent. Mans literally gave him the handsome squirt work treatment. I'm not gonna lie, the fact that Sanji can even do that is actually kind of crazy. But one day he did not like the new look. This man still liked it, that old ugly ass look. I don't know why I would have been happy if that was me. Anyways, one day he pulls out this weapon and put poison on it. And I guess he thought this was gonna work. So he run towards Sanji. And this man Sanji give him multiple kicks and knocks his face back to normal. And oh no, nah, look how he looks. Anyway, Sanji sent him flying all the way to the car where CP9 is at. And he's standing through the hallway looking all cool and shit. And CP9 all just looking back at him. And of course, you already know my boy had to light up his little cancer stick. But it's tough though, so I'ma let it slide. Meanwhile, Frankie's still fighting Nero, and this man started shooting his pistols at him again. And Frankie was dodging it to the point he almost fell off the train. And I'm not gonna lie, it's looking like it's bad for Frankie. And Nero, he tries to step on his hand, and Frankie, he moves it out the way, and he started smiling because he already knew Nero already fell into his trap. And then this man puts his legs all over him, paws, and they started sliding. And at this point, it's pretty much open for Nero. So, with that being said, Frankie pulls out the metal fist and then he punches him so hard in the face this man broke the roof and they landed inside car number two and look at this man face he did him dirty after that that made cp9 get up because they like hold on now them boys getting out of hand huh after that this man frankie he kicks nero over there to them and just like that two easy packs smoke and then sanji was like so is you so y'all the one that kidnapped Robin. And yeah, this look like a perfect part to stop it at. Hopefully y'all enjoy episode 7 of this series. I know it took me a little minute to upload this, but hey, at least y'all got a long video, right? Stay tuned for episode 8 and I'll catch y'all later.